Ah, huh. okay. Let's go again then, but this time let's combine two handheld consoles into one video. After all, more content and controversy. Oh, that's because the Game Boy had three games in total. And I combined the simultaneous releases into one, so that would be a very short video. Instead, let's finish off the handheld Game Boy consoles and rank the Game Boy and Game Boy Color Pokemon games. In total, there were eight games made for these handheld consoles. We have the beginning of the franchise, the first ever third game release, a bit of pinball action, some puzzles you can do, arguably some of the most ambitious titles Pokemon has ever made, of course I'm talking about the TCG games, oh and that generation 2. Before we start, let's put a little disclaimer in here first. This is my opinion of course. If you disagree, that's great. Make sure to comment your opinion down below and also like the video because I won't know you've disagreed otherwise. And let's do a little bit of housekeeping as well. While there are 8 games on this list, we're actually only going to rank 7 of them. And unfortunately that's down to missing translation. Back in the day, even some of the biggest franchise didn't always get everything 100% released to a western audience. Some of my personal favourites are Miles Edgeworth Investigations 2 and multiple games from the Dragon Ball series. Nowadays you'll generally be used to the games being released at the same time, including in the Pokemon franchise, but more often than not games were released in Japan with a time gap for it to be released in the West. And unfortunately, Pokemon Card GB2, Here Comes Team Rocket, never got that Western release. I think one of the major reasons for this is the timing of the game. Coming out on the Game Boy Color in March 2001 in Japan, the West would see the release of the Game Boy Advance in June 2001. If you think it took Pokemon Crystal around 7 months to hit the Western market after its Japanese release, you would probably be looking at early 2002 for the game to hit the Game Boy Color. And the Game Boy Advance was shown to be so significantly better than its predecessors, they definitely wanted to move on fast. This isn't an uncommon thing in terms of priorities, especially 15 or 20 years ago. The best one I can think of off the top of my head was when I was big into Yu-Gi-Oh when I was younger, and the Yu-Gi-Oh GX's anime was dropped for being dubbed in the fourth season in favour of starting 5Ds, which was out in Japan at the time. It was uh, also much darker, so considering four kids made it so... child friendly. The themes of season 4 really did not fit. The game falls similarly to its predecessor in idea, but featured the next set of Pokemon cards, the Rocket set, as Team Rocket would invade the world and steal cards from everybody. Most won't have played this one unless you've gone out of your way. I will point out nowadays there is a fan translation of this game, so you can check this out if you want to, but it doesn't feel fair to rank a game that most won't have actually played. I do recommend checking out though if you want your Pokemon TCG fix. Okay, time for the actual ranking. Number 7, Pokemon Pinball. If you walked into an arcade that has pinball machines, more often than not you're going to see themed versions of them. Star Wars, Simpsons, Dragon Ball Z, Back to the Future, you name it and it will have a pinball machine. Machine. So let's take this popular arcade game and put it on a handheld console that you can play anywhere. And what if we add some Pokemon elements to it? And boom, just like that you have 200,000 copies sold in the UK alone. So what's different about Pokemon Pinball to normal pinball? Well it includes capturing Pokemon, a special Meowth stage and a litter of references and Pokemon you can smash into at any time. It's number 7 on this list simply because regardless of the fun edition of Pokemon, for myself it's still just pinball and I think there's a certain amount of time that you would play on it. Still, I think it's a nice addition to the series. Number 6, Pokemon Puzzle Challenge. So, if I were to ask you what's the second best rated game on this list, and the 10th best rated game on the Game Boy Color, be honest, would you have said it's Pokemon Puzzle Challenge? The idea of splitting and releasing counterpart games onto a home console and a handheld console have been around since the beginnings of the Game Boy, and this is no different. Pokemon Puzzle Challenge is the handheld counterpart to Nintendo 64's Pokemon Puzzle League, which by the way, if you want to see me speedrun and do terribly art, make sure to check out the video on screen. The game is essentially a watered down version of Pokemon Puzzle League in the sense that it's now on a smaller screen compared to the Nintendo 64 home console version. I'd say the major distinguishability between the two games is the fact that the Puzzle League takes inspiration from the anime and its characters, including the sprites from the anime into the game, but Puzzle Challenge is based around Gold and Silver. A completely understandable decision considering the Game Boy Color was the home of Generation. Two. The only reason it's 6th on this list and not significantly higher is due to the options available in the main series and another sub-series game. It's certainly no slouch considering how positively it's rated. In fact, I think in general the games are such a high class of ranking that anything on this list could be pushed up a spot. The variety the game has helped a lot as well. Time challenges, marathons and training. It's a well worth entry to the puzzle series subgenre, and it's well worth checking out. Number 5, Pokemon the Trading Card Game. This game actually taught me how to play 
the TCG series when I was younger and definitely helped guide me to the incredible player I am now. Nowadays, competitive trading card games are incredibly fast. Sometimes I try to play Master Duel and honestly the 25 combos done in turn 2 completely do my head in. But we all have to start somewhere and learn how the game is played. You probably do it through TCG Live or through tutorials on YouTube nowadays. But back in the day, this was one of the best ways to learn. A video game where you can beat places like they are gyms as you learn the trading card game. I mean, it's just simple logic. This is what I want to learn from a video game, not like the, you know, Mario educational games from the 80s and 90s that can't hold a candle to it. It's important to note the card pool is very limited. At the time of the game release, there was only three sets from the TCG. The Rocket game also included the fourth set, but its limited amount of cards does not stop its playability. In fact, I almost feel like it's kind of simple like that. You can learn how to play the training card game, while you defeat eight club masters and four grand masters, which yes, does sound very similar, as it's mimicking defeating eight gyms and four elite four members. Though here the goal is to try and get the legendary cards, which are the legendary birds in Dragonite, which was the only suede or legendary at the time of release. Best part about the TCG game nowadays is that it's actually available on the Switch Online to play, so it's easily available if you want to get your TCG fix. And it's probably the most simplistic format that you can play of the TCG before the Charizard EX Terror or the Lost Zone existed. One thing worth of note is that there's only four prize cards instead of six in this game, so the games can be a little bit shorter. Okay, number four. Pokemon Red and Blue. I can see some pitchforks coming my way people, put them down, put them down, thank you. I know this could be a bit of a controversial one placing the first Pokemon games only fourth on this list, but I have to try and be objective and remove the nostalgia tinted glasses for the origin of the entire series. Simply put, this is why we are all here today. The Kanto region is such a core of the franchise and its beginnings. You know, taking a trip with your Charmander because you know you want a Charizard and then running into the first two gyms that you're weak against. Or picking Bulbasaur as it's the most optimum starter for the first two gyms. Beating the Elite Four to find out your champion is the rival, capturing Mewtwo and all the Pokemon you possibly can, even down to the more frustrating elements like the 1 in 2, 5, 6 glitch where it's supposed to hit with 100% accuracy and sometimes it doesn't. Actually, no, scratch that, that's really irritating. Though I will say I think Generation 1 is probably the only one that can get away with some of the glitches that are in the game like missing though. Nowadays I don't think Pokemon has zero room for that stuff, especially considering the popularity of the franchise, so when you have issues like Pokemon Scarlet and Violet with the performance with it being such a gigantic hit nowadays, I don't think it's something that we should accept. But for Generation 1 in its beginnings, it's almost like part of the experience. Now, why is it only fourth? Well, objectively and looking back on it away from the nostalgia glasses, there are a lot of glitches in this game. Item underflow, missing no, 1 in 2, 5, 6, graphical glitches. There are a whole field of issues with the games. And while it gets a pass in the nostalgic feel of it because it's what makes Generation 1, well, Generation 1. When objectively looking at it, it's a negative when it comes to the game in general. It's still the biggest selling Pokemon game for a reason though, and it's the reason that we're all here today. Some of those shortcomings don't affect the outcome of its success, and rightfully so. Please don't come for me in the comments guys, please. Number 3, Pokemon Yellow. When you look at the third games in the Pokemon series, a standard rule of thumb to apply is that they are improvements on the original games. Pokemon Yellow is no exception to this rule. I actually think it was a pretty good marketing technique applied by Pokemon to not only extend the Generation 1's lifespan before Generation 2, but to almost like put the player in Ash's role from the anime, crashing both worlds into one video game. Interestingly enough as well, the game was made to coincide with the release of the first mover. Your starter is locked in Pokemon Yellow, something that's hardly ever done in the series. It's done in the Let's Go games, but I can't think of anything else. You have a Pikachu like Ash in the animated series and also encounter Jesse, James and Meowth along the way. A brilliant interlink of bringing those who might have watched the series but not play the games into the world. It's not just the opportunity to almost play like your Ash, but it does have additional features and fixes from the original games. You can get all three starters within this game. Missing those trigger in Cinnabar Island is now gone, so I'm so very sorry to the glitches. The game features updated graphics, and it also adds one of the best features in the entire series, which was your partner Pokemon following you. Again, another thing that's in line with the anime as Pikachu's always outside of his Pokeball. It was actually the last game released in the West on the Game Boy in the back end of 1999 or early in 2000, depending on your region. In general, it's definitely the best entry on the original Game Boy and worth number three on this list. Number two, Pokemon Gold and Silver. I won't lie, I really flip-flop between number three and number two, but once again, it's removed 
moving the rose tinted glasses and looking at things objectively. And Generation 2 is pretty much at the peak of the Pokemon series. With the original intention of Generation 2's game being the finale of the Pokemon games in regards to the current director's works, this game had absolutely everything put into it. You know that normally 8 gym adventure that you had the first time? Well, how about we have a new region of 8 and then you can jump back and beat the previous 8 from Generation 1 to make a total of 16 gyms. And you know what? Let's go one step further. Not only are you beating the gyms from the previous generation, but how about the protagonist that you played at the end of the game as well? The game actually had so much in it that Safari Zone was cut, though it would eventually make its debut in the Generation 2 remakes on the DS. It's really hard to describe how good these games were when they were released. It pretty much smashed any expectations Pokemon had. We introduced two new types in this generation, the Dark type which was introduced to balance out the absolutely overpowered Psychic types that ran rampant in Generation 1, as well as take down the Ghost types, while the Steel types became the main defensive Pokemon and helped give Fighting and Fire types more to do offensively. An internal clock was added to the game to have time based events depending on whether or not it's 3 in the afternoon or 1 in the morning. You could get a TM or a Berry. Oh, and this is the first time that Pokemon Breeding became available in order to pass down moves from one set of parents to another. The game really changed everything and it has its rightful place at number 2 on the list. And finally, number 1, Pokemon Crystal. If review ratings were anything to go off, it would actually tell you that Pokemon Crystal is one of the rare instances where the Pokemon 3rd game is outshined by its predecessors. When you consider what Pokemon Emerald was to Generation 3 and Pokemon Platinum to Generation 4, the boundaries and expectations of the 3rd games definitely took a gigantic spike simply down to the amount of additions the games had. One of Crystal's main criticisms is that it doesn't add enough to the games. And while I don't think it adds as much as the retrospective generations do, it's still the definitive port of the Generation 2 and the Game Boy Color. Due to the in fact, it's basically Pokemon Silver with quality of life improvements and additions. As a quick list of some of the additions to the games, it's the first time you're ever able to play as a girl in the franchise, it fixes the absolute crazy decision from Gold and Silver to include multiple stone evolutions but only one evolution stone available, which you can get from Bill's grandfather. For example, there are four Pokemon that can evolve from the water stone in the game, and you only get one so you better pick wisely because you ain't getting any more. Crystal was the beginning of move to in the series, allowing Pokemon to learn Flamethrower, Thunderbolt and Ice Beam. In general, if we consider the incredible steps and bounds that Gold and Silver took as games, Crystal fixes some of the issues that are in Gold and Silver while adding a bit more to them. Do people expect more additions than the game had? Maybe. Especially when you consider the massive amount of additions in the series in the future games like Platinum or an entire sequel in Black and White 2. But considering Gold and Silver is seen as the best, a game that takes that and adds a few additions, makes Pokemon Crystal the definitive Pokemon entry on the Game Boy or on the Game Boy Color. A fitting game to sit near the top of the entire franchise. Until its remake came around. Thanks for watching guys. Okay, it's time to throw it over to the comments. What do you think is the best Pokemon Game Boy game? Is it Puzzle Challenge? Is it Gold and Silver? Do you want to see more lists like this? Make sure to let me know. Make sure to like and subscribe as it really helps out the channel. We are aiming for 1000 subscribers this year and we're getting closer and closer to that goal. Oh, and follow me on Twitter for more silly opinions. See you guys.